this uh, takes off from another video I just made. I was talking about why would you use Riemann sums, and one of the justifications is that there are some integrals you can't do as antiderivatives. But the other justification was that almost every, not every, but most integrals come to us through Riemann sums. That's the reason, that's actually their connection to reality. So I just wanted to do a quick real world, ex world example. It's a common example. It's nothing particularly original. Um, just wanted to make a video of it. And that is finding the mass, the total mass of a rod given its density function. So what do I mean by the density function? I mean, suppose I have like a, a long skinny rod. So I'm assuming that there's sort of no interesting variation from across the rod in terms of the material of the density. But maybe along the rod, we're going to have interesting variation. So let's say down here is x equals 0. And over here at the other end, that's x equals like L. And I'm going to want to figure out, well, so here's what I'm given. Let's suppose we're given the density, which is going to be linear density. Density here. Density, which is the mass per unit length. And let's say that that's equal to, let's turn that into math mode so it works better. Let's say that's turned into uh, Greek lambda of x. It's a common, it's L for linear density. And so that's going to be a, a function that at each point tells me, well, is it made of styrofoam? Is it made of wood? Is it made of lead at any point? Maybe if it's made of styrofoam over here, it's going to be a very small number for lambda of x. Maybe it's going to be very big if it's, if it's made of lead over here. And I want to figure out, given that information, how could I get the total mass? OK, well, the key is divide and conquer. Um, beep. Divide and conquer. The total mass is the sum of all the little bits of mass. I could chop it up. Now, I'm not going to do this for real, because the owner of the rod would be angry with me. But I'm going to think about chopping it up into little slices, just like this. Let's see if I can get the draw program to do this for me. So here's, I'm going to chop it up into a slice from between this cross section and this cross section. And that's going to be between let's say some value x and right here let me indicate there just a little arrow here I don't think I can fit the text in there otherwise this will be x plus and I can't write a delta easily. I could go to the character map, but it's a pain in the ass. That looks really terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't think I can fix it too well. That's supposed to be x plus delta x. We'll leave it as that. Okay. So it's going to be, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the mass between x and x plus delta x. And I'm going to sum all those up. Okay. So that means that the mass let's say just call it m, is approximately going to be, first we're going to get an approximation, it's going to be the sum, and I'm going to label all the bits by labels called k, I'm going to have n bits, and I want to get the sum of the mass in this range x to x plus delta x. Okay, actually, you know, that's a real equals kind of thing, but if the approximation comes when we try to find an easy way to calculate the mass of the little bits. Okay, and what we're going to do is the same idea as the area problem. We're going to take this little bit and we're just going to, we know that the, the density varies across this little bit, but it's not can't vary very much because it's a really small section. And we're just going to take the density lambda at some point in that section and 
um, multiply the density times the length. Because it's a linear density, that's going to give us the mass. And so we're just going to take lambda of some x sub k, it doesn't really matter what we do, left endpoint, right endpoint, midpoint method, whatever, times delta k, delta x rather. So here's densi linear density, mass per unit length, times length gives us the mass, and then we add them up. And the reason it's only approximation is that we picked some special xk as opposed to trying to analyze all the xk's in that little slice. But hopefully that's a pretty good approximation if the slices are small. Okay, well if that's an approximation and hopefully the approximation gets better as the slices get smaller, then really we're going to have the real answer, we can turn it back into an equality, if we turn it into, this, into the limit of the sum and the same stuff in here, uh, capital delta, okay. And of course we have a notation for that, it's the integral from the left hand end to the right hand end of this function lambda of x dx. And if we know an antiderivative of that guy, then we're good because uh, we could use fun fundamental theorem of calculus. If not, we're going to actually have to go back to this and settle for an approximation by taking a big N and maybe being clever about trapezoids or midpoints or something like that. Um, the quick and dirty way for this, to set this up, is M, we actually go all the way to integrals right at the start. We say the M is a fancy sum of little infinitesimal bits of mass. So the mass in here, I could call the, I could have called this like a delta m. I'm going to go ahead and cut to the chase and say, let's imagine that that slice is infinitesimally wide, and this is actually the mass where dm equals the mass, oh, equals the mass in this sort of infinitesimal slice. And this is actually how people thought of it hundreds of years ago before it was made rigorous. Okay, and so it's going to be sort of the sum of those infinite number of infinitely small pieces. And that's why people thought this was BS when they first came up, or some people thought it was BS. They had good objections to it, but it's been made rigorous in this way. But the quick and dirty way is it's the integral of dm. Now the integral goes from 0 to L, because that's the limits on x. And a little bit of mass is the density times a little bit of length where I use the differential, the sort of infinitesimally s small slice as well. That's the quick and dirty way. That's how a physicist would usually set up or an engineer without going through this. But at heart, to make it really careful, this is what is really going on there, to avoid talking about infinite sums of infinitesimal quantities. But this is a nice uh, way we're going to set things up in the future that is uh, a, a quick way of shortcutting the, some of the complexities of this.